Hey folks, how's it going? We're checking out Brass Eye. Not Brass Eye, the day today. Uh, hopefully you guys had a fantastic day. I know this is on the poll for a while around the time people started recommending Brass Eye and quite a few other shows. And finally one, it's only seven episodes, pretty short, just like Brass Eye was. Can't remember how many episodes Brass Eye was. It have been seven like this one too. I just remember Brass Eye being really short as well. And I know, I believe old boy from Brass Eye is in this. I cannot remember his name. I think Steve Coogan is in this. And then the old girl from Thick of It. I think she's in this as well. I think it's similar to Brass Eye, where it's like a news show. Like they're making jokes about the news and stuff like that. Because I feel like somebody mentioned that somewhere. I didn't go and read up on it or anything because I try to do that. As you guys know, I try to avoid spoilers and all that jazz. And I, I was also recommended recently to make sure I watch it from Internet Archive because it's the best copies. Anything else is probably going to be like edited or something like that. So I did find the ISO files on Internet Archive. I have had problems mounting the disc sometimes from the Internet Archive if they didn't rip it from them and make either AVI or MPEG-4. And the only ones I can find on Internet Archive are ISOs. So I did mount that and I'm playing direct from the disc like a DVD. So we'll see if I have any issues with it. Hopefully not. Then I'll have to go with whatever a streaming service has it, if it has it. Sometimes streaming services don't have it. But I know a lot of times streaming services will edit stuff out. And I, I prefer to go with the actual unedited versions, like the DVD version of it or something like that, like the original source. But I was told the Internet Archive has the best options. That's how I watched the uh, ones because that had the best version. And same thing like Taskmaster has their own streaming services. Their own streaming service, so they're not limited to like all the editing, all that kind of stuff that other streaming services might remove things from. So, yeah. I'm um, hopefully there's no issues with this mounted version. It's not all wonky because I've had problems with it before, but hopefully this one is a good rip. Like somebody tried to rip their ISO while I was all scratched up or jacked up or something where it starts glitching out and crashing and such. So, yeah. Um, let's just go ahead and jump into this one. We will talk about it more at the old end. Huh, click it. Work. Okay, we got him. The headlines tonight, bottomly refreshed after three days on cross, Branson's clockwork dog crosses Atlantic floor, and sack chimney sweep pups boss full of mayonnaise. His ordeal for the last two months by attending practice prison in a Rolls Royce factory, sharing his cell with an old school friend. When he starts for real at Brixton next Tuesday, he'll be expected to muck in just like any other convict detained at his mother's pleasure, adopting the regulation haircut and activity programs. The prince's choice executed tonight in the state prison in Tennessee in the manner of his own choosing. CBN's Barbara Wintergreen reports. Tennessee State Penitentiary. For some, it's death row, but for convicted mass murderer Chapman Baxter, it's the last night at... King, my, the only king I was prison. A special toilet? death bowl has been installed for this gruesome Presley demise. He died on the toilet full of drugs and yeah. cheeseburgers. That's the way I'm going to go. I ain't going to no electric chair. I'm going to the electric toilet. People Stop. might say that this was debasing the memory of the king. Do you agree with that? No, ma'am. No. The king did that himself by dying on the john in a big nappy. But a special cheeseburger oh, line in grim Elvabilia has gone on sale to commemorate tomorrow's pan fry. But maybe after today, that is how people will think of the king. <laughs> you can be right there. Press <laughs> protesters conduct a silent vigil outside this special disgrace land, while inside, Baxter chooses his backing vocals. I figured jailhouse rock would be kind of appropriate. Maybe Are You Lonesome Tonight always moves me that song. To raise money for a jam festival, isn't that rather stupid? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, it's all in a good cause. Yeah, for the course, yeah, but how much are you going to raise? Well, we hope to raise um, at least fifteen hundred pounds. Fifteen hundred pounds? That's it. That's a pathetic amount of money. You can raise more money by auctioning dogs. Uh, Glenis Kinnick, we've got, and Sebastian Coe. I hate Sebastian Coe. Well, <laughs> I feel he's made a very worthwhile contribution. What, actually. to the paltry sum of fifteen hundred pounds? Yes. Is that worth six months of your time? Well, I think it is. Worth I don't think it is at all. I think the only reason. Very ugly indeed. <gasps> Dang. <laughs> Zoom it in. <laughs> this has been very upsetting for you. Of course it has. And have you anything else to say in your defense? <laughs> Jenny Green? Thank you. <laughs> Ultra news. I really enjoyed that too much. Now comments from you, the public, in Speak Your Brain to the newly tightened up law. Would it, would it smack them up sharp or would oh. it catch them gradually? I think it needs to smack them up sharp. I'm to a jerk the head back? Yeah. Oh, sure. Certainly, yeah. Let's see if we can nail this down. In terms of this elastic band here, would you like to see? Perhaps, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. 
Sport now with Alan Partridge. Alan, you're a keen fan of the law, aren't you? I certainly am. I support the law fully. Um, not too keen on those that break it, though. How do you support it, then? Just generally support it. What, generally turn up on a Saturday afternoon and wave from the touchlines? <laughs> this is Sports Desk. I'm Alan Partridge, and it's a special desk of sport now as we look back on some of the sporting highlights of the last sporting season. Klaus been there on the inside, pumping away with his with those gristle-like muscly legs inside the those tight lycra shorts, which have become his trademark. And I don't know what this man is playing at. There's no way. Surely the judges must come down like a ton of bricks on that. Likes. And there, Sven Gunsen, closely followed by his great friend and teammate Klaus Ben. And the man with the bikes on his car is, yes, he's disqualified, as I said. <laughs> and uh, Klaus Spin there wins. Well, he's not no handed. Way, no need for that. No relation to the late uh, Denham. And come on, Pete, back on your feet. You can catch up with them. No, no, he can't be bothered. And it was upsets all the way in the dive championships. Greg Lagani down, double back. <laughs> but for my money, the best punches were being pulled right, this season in the boxing ring. As he's affectionately known to me. Thank goodness, actually, they're wearing gloves because I've witnessed bare knuckle boxing in a body they were born, Ooh. fighting the way God intended. Wrestling at points. I don't know if you've seen Women in Love, the marvelous scene by the fire. It uh, kind of resembled that. I'm Alan Partridge, and that was my sporting season. Why don't you. Thanks, Alan. Time now for our resident humorist, Brandt, the physical cartoonist from the Daily Telegraph, to cast a wry eye at the week's events. And it certainly has been some week, I'm hasn't it, Alan? Yeah. And so, <laughs> with that in mind, Mr. Brandt, put us in the picture. Do it as today's weather. Starting in the southeast, where it'll be a misty day tomorrow with a droplet density of about 50,000 per spherical inch. That's roughly as if the mist were hugging the ground room after chopping some wood. And finally, into the north of England and Scotland. A strong and highly long-lasting day tomorrow with hail aimed vertically downwards from above and there'll be a 30% chance. The summary then, breathe. What I've been watching on TV recently about all these uh Fit ups. What about a poster campaign to promote the letter of the law? Yeah, fit up. Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. TV campaign? Yeah, possibly, yeah. How quickly would you like to see this sort of action taken? Mm -hmm. ah. What letter is it? Ah. No, no, what letter is it? Um. What letter is it? The letter of the law. J. J in red on blue. Yeah. Environmation. What is he from talking about? Rosie the best May. Movie. <laughs> Britain is soon to have found a gap between the horizon and the earth. The gap, which is nine miles across, is believed to have been caused by recent storms which tore the horizon from its moorings. A team of civil engineers has now set off to lash the horizon back down with steel. <laughs> I'm Rosie May, oh, no. and this is my planet. <laughs> Take a look at this. This is St. Barley's Church in Coventry. That sequence will be featured in a full report on the Church of England, which is... The ritual of the bullying ritual. Ex-curate Peter Litterton was intimidated by his very first vicar. I went to the bathroom to wash after dinner and I found my flannel in the toilet. I see. This <laughs> is St. Barley's Church in Coventry. Barley's vicar Bobby Skye is a former bully himself, but has now decided to speak out. If a young deacon was being inordinated, then during the inordination ceremony, 200 vicars all going... <laughs> but while some are brave enough to speak out, others are still quietly being beaten up. Here in the vestry of St. Champs in Coventry, we secretly rigged up one of our cameras. Play. Yes, Bishop. Ow! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I was collecting up the hymn books, books very well, these exact books. Yes. And I was stacking them. And he pushed one in. He said, you can fit another one. I said, I can't. And he pulled my hair right back. Yeah. And so my head was like this. I thought I, thought I, I was going to choke. And then he ran along this pew. Right there. And threw the books. Pick them up. Pick them up. Pick on someone your own size. God's bigger than all of us. <laughs> and since we've recorded that report, God, everybody featured in it has lost their hair. The day today.
But now, if the police receive more than five complaints against a single household, they just turn up and release a tiger through the front door. <laughs> so far, they say, the Home Secretary's new measures have been 100% successful. Yeah, of course, everybody gets murdered. Albert Marsh, who's highly respected. The evening begins with a chance to savour again Great Britain's last televised hanging. He's using a nylon hemp mix rope tonight for the first time ever. That's what he wanted. That's what he's got. It's to guarantee extra strength. Express. There are you, big hairy cock. Ja. Sir Astam. Sir, are you shitter? These days, it's very fashionable among young people to do what I'm doing now. Yes. I'm being filleted by a young girl <laughs> known as a groupie. It's an interesting feeling and uh, certainly quite relaxing. Please chill it. Well, it's half an hour later. My initial was reaction depressed. was one of... Oh, would in time no, become no, taboo Mr. themselves. Next door again. What's he want now, eh? Ah, uh, Mr. Eddie, I was wondering if I could be borrowing a cup of sugar for my lunch. What did he say? He says he wants you to give him a punch. Oh, all right. Mm. Yeah. The show which featured naked two-year-olds romping for the pleasure of adults. Oh. <laughs> Must say it's looking in excellent condition. And yes, yes, the lights have gone out. There, it's a good clean drop. Piper bidding you good night. Good night. So join us for the start of the evening with The Hanging. That's Attitudes Night this Friday on BBC Two. Weapon menace. Well, basically, one of these and one of these have a range of 50 feet and can bring down a helicopter. I'm like a, you know, turtles like a potato gun? <clears throat> Time now for business with Calatoli Sisters. Thanks, Chris. Take her off the monitor, I don't... Slightly. But Oxy McGee flew back a ninth, despite a creeping bid from connected breath dumps at four. On the currency market, how did horse. the pound fare? A quick glance at the currency cat. Not too well, I'm afraid. There's a disconcerting 47 degree slope against the dollar. Chris. Alternative medicine has been growing steadily in popularity over the yeah, last seven and a half years. The latest fad is sending thousands of patients scurrying to a medieval hospital in Dartmouth. Iggy Pop Barker reports. Healthcare ...and offers a range of historic oh, no. remedies at 21st century prices. This should oh. really get rid of the melancholy, yeah? Sore a bit? Physical yeah, complaints like the hardened lump on this woman's foot are... Foot. Right. Remove right. that yeah. and take it away. <laughs> yes. And bury it with some... Uh, Gooseberries. We've done the tests and we're this woman is a witch and is being talked through the drowning procedure. So, um, what we'll be doing is we'll be. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Take a hand. Take a hand. Dr. Philip Johansson is Europe's leading practitioner of bile chanting. He was one of the four doctors and ten patients killed in this morning's. <laughs> A common studio accident, a man being electrocuted in the face by a loose cable. But what made the accident uncommon is that it was caught on one of these, a home camcorder. Hello, I'm Remedy Malahires, who owns the security cameras at the Norwood branch of NatWest. She owns the security The real cameras. capturing happened soon after. Our reality eye fest continues courtesy of St. John. These snaps while out walking her brother on Wandsworth Common. The unnamed woman had been pierced by a shaft of frozen urine, which oh. had fallen from the toilet facility of an overhead plane. <laughs> and finally, Mr. Peter Dexy of Lancaster same. sent us amusing real-life tales of danger and rescue, which, thanks to this little child, it's a camcorder, we can actually show you each week on It's Your Blood. Air that's soft and easy to slice, like human beings. If a helicopter hits the ground at 100 yeah, miles an hair. hour, it can be rebuilt. But for a man made of crushable bone and ligaments that tear, it's not quite so easy. In recreating the horrific events of the 12th of December, night powerful sensation in your brain and body. Farmer Chester Johnson uses a chopper for crop surveillance and he flies it himself. It's 10 o'clock on the birthday of his sheepdog, Lindsay, and Chester has planned him a treat. It was a rat. At first, everything was normal. They were up and enjoying the ride. It was smooth and exhilarating, like an aerial motorbike. 
But then Chester decided to look at his watch. By sheer luck, a member of the public, Mrs. Maureen Tucker, had noticed the helicopter and started shooting these valuable pictures with her own camera. <laughs> After 10 minutes, she could call a shepherd then. The steel vulture of Beelzebub was now just seconds away from the children's soft heads. By sheer brilliance, the shepherd dog team also managed to avoid an old woman up a stick in a nearby field. While the heroes celebrated, the shepherd's unattended flock caused a pile-up on the M5 and had one of these. It's a pocket shepherd. It costs just 59 pounds, a small price to pay for the gift of a functioning body that works properly. <laughs> New chief wife decapitation, grisly but gripping. The son, Robin Cock, and the Daily Star fill my nose and put my specs there, Raw's drunken major. That's it. That's the day today on the day that Boris Yeltsin told the world how he milked Mrs. Thatcher. Her flabby breasts. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> All right, man. That was the first episode of Day to Day. That was really, really good. Now, there's some jokes I, I didn't get. Anything that was, like, directly rooted in something specific in regards to, like, politics and like that. I didn't get it. I don't remember the one specifically that I didn't get, but I know there's some jokes I was watching here that I, I did not get. But there was some stuff that was, you know, that was nothing to get. It was just funny and goofy because it was just silly. I don't know what the word for it is nonsensical. I think that's the word for it. Yeah, it was nonsensical, and that's all it was funny. It was a really good bait and switch at the end, though. I did not. You expecting the kids to get hit by the helicopter, and then it, it was a pile up on the highway. It just, it was ridiculous. It was a silly joke, and there are uh, quite a bit of like crazy silly jokes in here that I thought were uh, fantastic. What's his name? Um, Christopher Morris, when he was, when he switched the monitor over to the lady who was doing the financial stuff, and he was like, turn the monitor off, like he wanted to see her face. And just... <laughs> so shitty and him snapping on a lady because she only raised fifteen hundred dollars and wasted so much time like six months of her life to raise fifteen hundred dollars and not knocking charity is charity to raise money is raise money but yeah six months and you only raise fifteen hundred dollars for uh the homeless it does feel like you just it's a self-serving thing you're not really doing it for the homeless you're doing it for the notoriety you know it, it does feel that way i mean every dollar counts but no, it just feels like like all the, all the time and stuff you spent towards that stuff. How much of it, of it went towards like your labor? How much of it? Went, I don't know. I have I don't know. It just seems like you could have did a lot more. You could have raised a lot more than that. But you can't really judge people who are actually doing work and some when you're not doing it. But yeah, as it's like you do a lot more. Because I was like, are these real street interviews? I don't know. But I, I think the whole point of the street interviews is to show that. You can really get people to go along with anything, get them to voice their frustrations, and then try to probe them for more information in regards to like what they think the solution to whatever issue is, and then give them like a nonsensical solution, and then I guess like lead them on a ridiculous uh, in a ridiculous manner. I think that's what he was doing. I don't really know for sure. I could be I could be wrong, but I've seen people do similar like street interviews now. I think that's what he was doing. I could be completely wrong. He just could just be on the streets, just fuck with people. I don't know. <laughs> it could be like, let's like just go on the streets and just mess with people. But I did enjoy it. I, I, I thought it was very goofy. It was very entertaining. Uh, a lot of it was just very silly, silly humor. Uh, some of it I think was like, you know, grounded in real events that were happening that I just don't, I wasn't familiar with. But it was goofy and nonsensical enough where I was actually able to enjoy it and just laugh at it for its uh, silliness, you know. So I, I definitely enjoyed it in that sense. Steve Coogan just being a goofball, even with like his sports stuff, there were funny. It was funny stuff there. I don't know enough about like actual cyclist sports, uh, but I I think the whole <laughs> the car driving next to him. I think they just do like repair the bikes and stuff if they break. Because I think if your car your bike breaks, it doesn't disqualify you out of race. Just like like NASCAR, if your tire flies off, you're not disqualified. Does we have a pit crew and stuff like that? I think it's it's maybe the same concept. I'm just. Assuming, you know, I guess so, for lack of a better term, like context clues and just putting pieces together based off of other stuff I know. I just haven't watched enough like cycling stuff to know for sure, but I think that's what the that was there for. But yeah, all around, I, I enjoyed this. I thought this was a really good start to everything to get a, a good feel for the show. Uh, everybody was very entertaining. Yeah, I enjoyed the whole Elvis thing. I think that guy was blending because he said he don't know what song he's going to go with, but it looks like ultimately he didn't even choose a single song. And that Marine that was singing, like he just blended a bunch of songs together. Because he was singing, it sounded like he was saying something about Jailhouse, and then he said something about Blue Soy Shoes. Like, he was blending multiple songs together. And I like the accents. The, the, the Steve Cook and an old boy were doing was just goofy. It was just <laughs> I could barely understand what they were saying. It was like hardcore country. It was difficult to understand what they were saying at some points. It had a, a hardcore, like, draw to it. 
I said, I enjoyed this. I, I thought this was fantastic. It was a good start to everything. I'm glad this uh, mounted well. It didn't glitch out. Nothing froze. And this is a really good copy. This is, yeah, worked out really well. All right, folks, that is it. That is all for this one. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Later.